Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be learning how to use email to allow users to reset their passwords. So Django has built-in functionality that can generate a secure token to ensure that only a specific user can reset their password. And then we'll see how we can send an email to Django that has instructions for a user to reset their password. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go back into our projects urls.py module and add some more built-in Django views. So let's open that up. So within my Sublime text here, I'm going to open the Django project URLs. So this is the URLs module where we have the admin route, register route, and things like that. So just like our login and logout views down here towards the bottom, uh, these password reset views are built into the auth views that we've already imported. So we're going to create a few different paths using these built-in views, and I'll explain along the way what each of these do. So there are a lot of them, so I'll try to keep this organized as we're walking through them. So first, let's create a URL pattern called password reset. So I'm going to create this down here below our login and logout views. And I'm going to use our logout view as a template here uh, to get started. So I'm going to paste this in. And now we want this path to be password-reset. And the view that we're going to use here comes from auth views as well. And this is going to be password-reset view. And for the template name here, we will put this in users forward slash password underscore reset dot HTML. And for the name, we will simply do password underscore reset. Now this is a very long line, so let's split this up. So I will split this here, and also after our auth views, I'll split that there. Still going off the edge there a little bit, but that's better than it was. So this will be a route that provides a form for our user to fill out uh, that will send a password reset instruction to their email. Uh, so we specified that we wanted to use this password underscore reset template. So let's create that. And we'll create that in the same place that we created the login and logout templates. So that is here in our users app and in our user templates. So in our users templates, I'm gonna create a new template here, and I'm gonna call this password underscore reset dot HTML. And within this template, we're gonna have a form for filling out our email address. So I'm gonna grab one of our other templates as a starting point. So I think the login uh, route would be a good starting point. So I'm going to copy that template and paste it into our password reset template. And now I just wanna make a few changes here. So the legend, I will change the legend to reset password. I will change the button here on the submit form to request password reset. And we also don't need this link here at the bottom. So I'm just going to remove that div that is underneath our form and save that. Okay, so now that we've created that path with the built-in view and also created the template, we also need to create the page for after this form is submitted successfully. So this will just be a route that confirms that the email has been sent and tells you to check your inbox. So we need to create that. So let's open up our URLs module again here. And this route will be very similar to the one that we just created. So I'm going to uh, copy this. So I'm going to copy this and paste this in. Now this still looks a little weird. Let me try to uh, split this up a little more here. Okay, so that looks a little strange, but at least uh, you all can see everything on the screen at the same time if I do it this way. Okay, so like I said, this next route is just going to be the page for when our password reset form is submitted successfully. And this route will just confirm that the email has been sent and tell us to check our inbox. So we can set this equal to password reset forward slash done as the URL. For the route that we want to handle this, this is going to be password reset done view. The name of the template that we're going to use is password underscore reset underscore done dot HTML. And the name that we will use for this route is going to be password underscore reset underscore done. So now let's create a template for this password reset done view. So again, in our user templates, let's create this. So I will create a template in here called password underscore reset underscore done dot HTML. 
So in here, this is just going to be an informative page. There aren't going to be uh, forms or anything like that in here. So I think we can just copy the logout template and reuse most of that. So within our password reset done template, I'm going to paste that in. And now I'm actually just going to remove everything inside the content block here. And I'm just going to put a bootstrap alert on this page. So I will put in a div and this div, I'll give a class equal to uh, alert. And this will just be an alert dash info. And within this alert, I'm just going to say an email has been sent with instructions to reset your password. OK, so with those two routes complete, let's actually pull this up in our browser and check if this is working. So it isn't quite going to work just yet, but I want to make sure that the error that we receive is at least what I expect it to be and that we haven't messed anything up along the way. Um, so let's make sure that our dev server is running and it is. So now let's go back to our page and let's go to forge slash password dash reset. OK, so we can see that we get a form here. Now, if we try to fill in this form and submit it, then it's going to give us an error because it's going to try to reference a path that doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to fill this in with my email. So coriumshafer at gmail.com and I will submit that. Then we can see that we get an error that it's looking for a password underscore reset underscore confirm route. And if we look in the place where the actual error occurred, which is down here in this template rendering, then we can see that it occurred because it's trying to create a URL to this password reset confirm route uh, with these weird values here. And the name of the template that threw this error is called password reset email .html. So that is a template that Django is using in the background to create the email to send to the user so that they can reset their password. And when it's trying to create that email from the template, it runs into an error because we don't have a route called password reset confirm. And not only is it trying to access that route, but it's also trying to pass two different things into the URL parameters. So one of those things is called this UIDB64. And the other parameter is one called token. Now these are two parameters that we need to accept in our URL so that we know that the user who requested the password reset is the person trying to access that page. So basically it's adding a layer of security to these routes. The UIDB64 is the user's ID encoded in base64, and the token is the token to check that the password is valid. And these are required since the view is expecting them. So let me create this route that it's looking for, and this will make more sense once we see this in action. So like I said before, these error pages are very useful for following the trail of exactly what changes we need to make in order to get things working. So to add this route, let's pull up our project URLs uh, module again. So I will pull this up and go to our other two routes here. And now we need to create a route for password reset confirm. So let's just copy one of our other password reset routes here and paste in another one. So now we want this URL to be password dash reset dash confirm. And remember, I said that it took in two URL parameters. So within our angle brackets here, one of those parameters that it is expecting is UIDB64. And the other, so forward slash again, another angle brackets here, you put the uh, trailing slash there at the end. The other one is token. So you have to accept those URL parameters there because it expects those. So now the view that we want to handle this is going to be password reset confirm view and the template that we're going to want to use is within our users templates and this will be password reset confirm dot html and the name that we will set for this is password reset confirm and make sure all of that is spelled correctly okay and just like our other routes let's create a template for this and we called this template password underscore reset underscore confirm dot html so within our user templates i'm going to create a new file and this is password underscore reset underscore confirm dot html 
And this one is going to have a form for us to actually reset our password. So let's copy one of the templates with a form. And I'm just going to use the password reset form as a starting point. So back in our password reset template, I'm going to copy that and paste that into our password reset confirm template. And the only thing that I'm going to change in here is the text that is on our submit button. So instead of request password reset, this is actually going to be the form that resets our password. So I'm just going to say, uh, let's see, reset password. Okay, so now that we have that password reset confirm route that that password reset email template was trying to uh, create. Now let's try to resubmit, resubmit our password reset form and see what we get. So I will go back to the browser here and reload our password reset page. And now let's submit uh, the password reset for that email one more time. Okay, so we're still getting an error, but this is a different error. This says connection refused. Now, this error is less helpful than most of the other error pages, uh, but I can tell you that what's going on here is that it's trying to send an email, but it's failing. So right now, we don't have an email server or anything like that to send email. So at this point, you have some choices that you can make. There are a lot of different ways to send email. Now in this video, I'm going to be using Gmail. Now if you don't have a Gmail account, then you can create one and use these same constants with your username and password. Now if you don't want to use Gmail, then there are ways that you can set up your local host to be used as an email server with Django, but I feel like using something like Gmail is a better example of how uh, this is actually going to be done in production. And it also give us a uh, practice of actually sending emails. But just in case, I'm also going to link to the Django documentation on how to set this up on your local host, just in case some of you want to do it that way. But with that said, in this video, I'm going to be using Gmail. Okay, so to do this with Gmail, depending on how your account is set up, you might have to let Google know to expect sign-ins from a Python application. So let me pull up my browser to show you this. So I have searched uh, Google App Passwords here. And by searching that, there are instructions for how to sign in to your Google account through different applications. Now, if you don't have two-factor authentication, then you can just tell Google to allow sign-ins from less secure apps. But if you do have two-factor authentication, which I have, and which I would highly recommend, by the way, uh, then you can create a password specifically for the application that you want to sign in from. And that is what I did. So the link to do this is the third link down here that says App Passwords Sign In. And the other two pages up here are just two links with instructions, and they'll just link you to that third page eventually anyway. So I already went through that process and have put my password for this Django app in a private environment variable on my machine. So once you have gone through those Google instructions that allow you to sign into your Gmail through uh, a Python application and you have all that set up, then now we can open our project's settings.py file and set a few variables. So I can open our project's settings.py and I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom to set a few more variables here that will set up our email. So I'm gonna say email underscore backend is equal to, and within a string here, I'm gonna say django.core.mail.backends dot smtp dot email backend and check the uh, casing on that that is a class there at the end okay and now i'm going to set an email underscore host and these are all caps by the way so set an email host to smtp dot gmail oops spell it right gmail dot com and now we want an email underscore port and we're going to set that equal to 587, and that is an integer, not a string. And lastly, we will set one called email underscore use underscore TLS, set that equal to true. And now you need to pass in your username and password. Now for the username and password, I'm not going to actually type those out here for obvious reasons because I don't want anyone to have access to my email. Uh, so for this information, I put this in an environment variable. And I have a video on using environment variables to hide sensitive information for things like this. Uh, so if you don't know how to do this, then I would just give that video a watch. So to access these, I'm just going to say uh, email underscore host underscore user is equal to, and to access those environment variables, I can simply say os.environ.get 
get. And I put this an environment variable called email underscore user. So now I'm going to copy that. And for the next line here, actually, I'll just copy this entire line. For the next line, we are setting the email host password. And the environment variable that I set for this is email underscore pass. And this email host user here, this is actually your login email address for Gmail. So be sure that you have an email address set for that value. Uh, so with those settings set, I should now be able to send an email with Django and get this password reset email. So let's try this out. So first of all, let's make sure that our dev server is still running and it is. So I'm gonna open up our browser, go back to the password reset page try to send this to Corey M. Schaefer at gmail.com again. I will submit that. And it took a little second there, but it says that an email has been sent with instructions to reset your email. Okay, so now if I open my Gmail, which I have open here in the browser, uh, we can see that this has already come in. If it hasn't come in yet, it might take a second. You can just refresh your email uh, until it comes in. Uh, if it doesn't come in, then you might have to go through those uh, steps again and see if you miss something there. But we can see that I got an email that says password reset on localhost port 8000. So if you were actually doing this from a website, then this would actually be the domain name here. So if I click on that, we can see it says you're receiving this email because you requested a password reset. Uh, please go to the following page and choose a new password. Uh, your username, in case you've forgotten, is Corey MS. So I can click on this uh, password reset link here, and we can see that it's going to password reset confirm, and then it has those two values in the URL. So that's that UUIDB uh, value, and then the token. So it created those for us. And now when we click on this, it'll pass those to that route. So now if those tokens and everything were correct, which they'll only be correct if they come from your email, so they know that it's you trying to change your password. If they are correct, then now we're redirected to a form where we can actually reset our password. So I'm gonna set this to something different. So I did have testing one, two, three. Now I'm gonna use capital testing and three, two, one. So, and then confirm that. So capital testing, three, two, one, and reset. Okay, so finally we got to the last step and we got an error, but this is going to be super easy to fix. This is just one last route called password reset complete that tells us our password has been successfully changed and that we can log in with a new password. So let's create this one last route and we should be finished up. So let's open up our projects URLs module again, and we need to create one last route. So I'm going to uh, copy this route here. Actually, this one has a bunch of uh, variables in the URL. I'm going to grab this password reset route instead and paste this in. So this last route here is going to be password-reset-complete. And the view that we want to handle this is password reset complete view. And for the template name, we will set this equal to uh, password underscore reset underscore complete dot HTML. And for the name here, we will do password underscore reset underscore complete and save that. Okay, and just like the other routes, let's create a template for this. So we called this template. So in within our user templates, I'm gonna create a new file. This is gonna be password underscore reset underscore complete dot HTML. And this template is just gonna be informative. So it doesn't have any forms or anything like that. So that's very similar to our password reset done template. So let's just copy from there. So I've still got that password reset done template here. So I will copy that and paste it in here. So currently on this page, we just have an alert. So I'm gonna have an alert on this page too, and just say your password has been set. And now we can link them to the sign in page. So right underneath that, I'm just going to do an anchor tag and do a uh, code block here and have this be a URL to our login page. And then for the text of this link, I'm just going to say uh, sign in here and save that. Okay, so with that last page created, let's walk through all of this one more time and I'm going to point out every page that we are on throughout the whole process. So I'm going to go back to our browser and let's go to our main page here and then go to forward slash password reset. 
So this here is the password reset page that displays the password reset template. So now we'll fill out the form uh, with the email that we want to uh, request the password reset link be sent to. So I will submit that. So when we submit that form, it sends the email and it directs us to the password reset done template that just gives us this information that the email has been sent. So now we can actually go to our email and see the message that was sent. So if I go to my email, then I've got one new message here. So again, this is a password reset on localhost. So I will go here and click on the password reset link and now we're being asked to create a new password for our account. So this is the password reset confirm template. And lastly, if we fill out the new password, so I'll do the old password of testing 321, testing 321, and reset password. Then that resets our password and now we get redirected to the password reset complete page and this is the last page in that process and from here we can click on sign in and if I sign in with that new password then if everything worked correctly then you should now be able to log in with your new password um, okay so that looks like that works so that's awesome so now that we're done with that, there's just one more thing that we need to do. Uh, we haven't actually created a link anywhere for the user to reset their password. And most web applications have this link on the login page since that's where they'll go to sign up. Uh, so I'm going to put a link there for them to reset their password if they forgot it or just want to change it. So let's go to the login template and put that there. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna close down some of our tabs that we have uh, loaded up here. Now I'm going to open our login template and I'm just going to put this reset password link right after our submit button. So I'll just even put it right in the same div. So here's our submit button here to log in and right underneath that, I'm going to just put some small text here and I'm going to give this a class equal to uh, text dash muted. And I'm also going to give it a margin left of two. So within there, let's create a, an anchor tag. So I'll create an anchor tag and the URL, I will create a URL here and we want the URL to go to that password reset route. So password reset and the text that we can put for this link, I'll just say forgot password uh, question mark. Okay, so once we save that, let's go back to our browser and let me log out and go back to the login page. Okay, and it looks like we got an error here. Um, so reverse for password reset not found. Okay, so that is, I put a dash there, that should actually be an underscore. So back in our login template, instead of URL for password dash reset, that should be uh, password underscore reset is what I named that route. So now let me uh, reload that. So now we can see that right beside the login button, there is a link that asks if you forgot your password. So if you forget your password or want to reset your password, then you can just click there and it takes you to that reset password form where you can type in your email and request your password reset link. And at that point, the user would go through that whole process that we saw before. Uh, okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. I uh, hope that now you have a good idea for how you can create password reset emails using Django. Now, this is a nice, secure way to do these password resets since Django handles all of that token creation and everything else in the background. It's definitely a feature that a lot of people overlook on applications, but it's one that you're definitely going to need at some point, so you may as well learn how to do it now. And that really does it for the base functionality of the application that we've built. Now in the near future, I'm going to release further videos on some improvements that we can make to this application. So when it comes to web applications, there's almost no limit to the improvements that you can continue to make. So for example, with this application, uh, we'll go over how to write unit tests for this application. We'll go over how to deploy this application on multiple different platforms. Uh, we could learn how to send longer running requests off to a message queue and make it asynchronous. Uh, we could add a commenting system, a search feature. There are just all kinds of things that we can do with this application in the near future. So if you have any suggestions for future videos that you'd like to see with this application, then feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to work on a tutorial for that in the near future.
But if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.